Our next topic is uh, civil preparedness for archives. Archives belonging to uh, authorities, organizations, uh, form an incredibly important part of our cultural heritage, as they can be said to form a cornerstone of society by being the country's national or institutional memory. How can we think about preparedness and security issues related to our physical and digital archives? These are questions that our next speakers master. Please give a warm welcome to Ruth Tidor, Head of Preservation Department at the National Archives of Estonia, and Marie Lennar Sand, Chief Security Officer at the Swedish National Archives. Welcome. So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, and um, uh, to start, uh, we'd like to, uh, together with Maria, thank the organizers for having uh, the belief. Uh, trust uh, in, uh, in us, uh, in the archives of uh, Sweden and Estonia, uh, and uh, to invite uh, us together with Maria to give you a very short presentation about the actions concerning civil preparedness uh, for the archives in these two countries. And we have agreed uh, that uh, I will start with a very short uh, presentation as we have to share, we will share 20 minutes uh, and then Maria will continue. And I will address this topic um, from three perspectives. Uh, the implementation of preventive measures, the practical experiences gained and the updates to our guidelines and crisis management approaches prompted by the events in our vicinity over the past two years. Uh, although the National Archives of Estonia as an institution is quite young, the establishment of a National Archive system began at the beginning of the Republic of Estonia, directly after the end of the Estonian War of Independence in 1920. Then the Archives Committee first meetings were held to discuss the future of a national Britain heritage and the formation of our own state's archives. During the Soviet occupation, archival work continued, albeit with interruptions in archival administration and closure of the archival content. The restoration of the Republic of Estonia in 1991 brought about a transition to modern archival administration making archive contents publicly accessible once again. In accordance with Estonia's Second Archives Act, uh, the National Archives as a center of archival administration and a government institution currently operating uh, under the Ministry of Education and Research became active in January 1999. Moving on to crisis management. It is fortunate to note that incidents where archival records stored in archive buildings were damaged date back to the 1990s. During this period, the newly re-established Republic inherited relatively deteriorated archive buildings from the Soviet era in every Estonian county. These buildings were in poor physical condition and in some cases the only heating method was wood burning stove. Considering these circumstances, it is a great coincidence that the archival collections did not suffer serious and extensive damage due to the potentially high-risk conditions. Over the last 25 years, efforts have been made to reduce the number of archive buildings, renovate old ones, and consolidate collections into new facilities. Presently, the archives consist of seven buildings in four locations, housing approximately 10 million records dating back to 1240. To increase the security of our buildings and collections, we have taken into account all the legal requirements for buildings serving an archival function, have followed recommendations from the rescue board and the best practices observed in the archives of other countries. On this slide, you may see our latest new building called Nora, which also serves as the headquarters of the National Archives. 
Additionally, plans are underway to consolidate collections currently housed in two old premises in Tallinn under one roof with the Estonian National Library. Since 1999, specific risk analysis and emergency planning tailored to modern art heritage institutions have been in place. This legislation mandates all archives and institutions under archival supervision to conduct risk analysis and compile disaster plans for protection and rescue in case of emergencies, such as water and fire accidents, external attacks and technical failures. While no longer mandatory for record creators, emergency preparedness remains compulsory for archives, ensuring regular updates to comprehensive plans that include detailed action guidelines, emergency supplies, equi equipment lists, vital contacts and drill schedules. As already mentioned, the archive has a limited experience in handling emergency situations in own premises but has been directly involved in the aftermath of a couple of natural disasters and in the conservation of rare paper object, objects damaged by a fire at one heritage site in recent history. For instance, in January 2005, we organized the rescue, evacuation, freezing and drying of 16 cubic meters of water damaged records in our western coastal town of Perno where an area of about eight square kilometers of town was flooded by the storm for a few days. The archives of a local, of a local so social insurance board was located in the basement of a building directly on the banks of a river and were damaged due to the rise in seawater and the associated flooding. Another specific hands-on experience of rescuing records from a water accident was in August 2021, when a heavy rain flooded the city of Tartu and hit the building of Estonian Literary Museum, which, which was under the renovation at this time. The museum was not prepared for such a large-scale accident, and the emergency equipment was scarce. So the archive assisted the museum with equipment, materials and voluntary labour. In May and June of uh, 2016, we provided assistance to the National Heritage Board, which was leading the rescue operations to manage the aftermath of a wire, fire on a small island situated in the border lake between Estonia and Russia. The local Old Believers prayer house was severely damaged, including its furnishings, icons, and over 50 volumes of a unique prayer books. Drawing from our practical experience and the necessity to aid archival creators in developing action plans for record protection, the archives crafted two guidelines, one on compiling disaster plans and another on handling water damaged records. Fortunately, their content remains relevant and both sets of instructions are readily available on the archives website till today. Prompted by the events of February two years ago, Estonian government agencies, under the leadership of the Ministry of the Interior and the Government Office, began developing detailed action plans against cyber and military attacks. Like all institutions affected by this requirement, the archive has also developed an action plan according to four levels of risk and described corresponding levels of readiness, designated as Alpha, Bravo, Charlie and Delta. Such a plan describes a wide range of topics, including the institution's core tasks throughout different levels of crisis, information flow procedures, organization of operations, alternative methods for continuing activities, security measures at different levels, crisis rules, and many other aspects. Short and long evacuation lists of records have been prepared based on the scope and escalation speed of a crisis. Documents are prioritized based on their importance, including those confirming statehood, proving citizens' rights, and transactions based on non-digitized materials, and those with significant historical, cultural, or artifact value. Records identified as evacuation priorities are also prioritized for digitization. 
to reduce preservation risks for our extensive collection of digitized records, totaling over 5 petabytes today, we have stored all master files on LTO tapes abroad, with deposits made in April 2022 and the early summer of the previous year. The disaster plans usually provide the list quantities and locations of some appropriate emergency supplies and equipment against local and minor accidents. But in recent years, we have begun to compile lists and acquire equipment and supplies for all seven buildings in the light of possible physical attack, attack and threat of war. Tabletop exercises have been organized and are taking place this year for seven buildings to test various crisis scenarios and train local teams, as well as to identify deficiencies in present action plans. The Ministry of Culture and the National Heritage Board are leading the effort to negotiate the establishment of a no-strike list with military structures and to propose certain selected buildings to, to UNESCO to achieve an increased protection status from those buildings including archives. The archive has been engaged in joint exercises with the Defence League to explore opportunities for their involvement and assistance to memory institutions at various stages of crisis, whether in terms of security or in organizing logistics and manpower. And of course, we are working with multiple ministries to identify appropriate alternative evacuation destinations beyond Estonia. Last but not least, many volunteers, both uh, individuals and organizations, uh, alongside planning um, and taking measures to protect uh, their own country and values, have been making um, camouflage nets to contribute uh, in modest way to aid Ukraine, and Estonian archives have not been an exception in this regard. By thanking you, I will give floor to Maria. Thank you for uh, letting me talk also. Uh, my name is Marie Lennersand, and I'm the Chief Security Officer at the Swedish National Archives. Um, but previous speech had mentioned PhDs. I actually have a background with one of those, a PhD in history, specialized in the period of the um, Great Northern War, that's early 18th century. Another war with Russia took part in Ukraine, among other places, ended quite badly for Sweden. Um, so, um, that's sort of the background. Uh, the National Archives is quite old. We were around already in that period. And it's often said that archives are the memory of society and the information in archives shape our identity and our history. And in the archives we have enormous amounts of information about everything big and small, old and new, uh, on paper and digital. And we have records of people who are born, go to school, pay taxes. We have records about political decisions, verdicts in trials, drawings of buildings, roads, bridges. And all this uh, information, it makes up the history of our society. And therefore, it is part of our cultural heritage. But if the archives are the memory of society, without them, society would lose its memory. Uh, and this, as we can understand, would be a very bad thing. Could be uh, very complicated for us as persons if you lose the documents that tell that you own your house. Can you prove it? If the archive is destroyed, you, then you maybe you can't get those records. And also, if uh, documents are destroyed that prove events in history, um, then can you be sure that what the history book says it's true, is true? 
So uh, destroying archives is a very effective way for someone who wants to, to hurt society, hurt individual people, and also to rewrite history. And the Swedish National Archives were founded in the early 17th century. We celebrated our 400th anniversary a few years ago. And the oldest documents we have are from the Middle Ages, but we have a lot of modern digital records also. And because uh, we are such an old institution, over the centuries uh, we have witnessed many wars and disasters. So contingency planning is, is not something new to us. Um, but well, in the present day, there are many new and serious challenges. Um, but keeping the archives safe is an, well, our most important goal. Uh, it was back then and it is now. Uh, but what we could ask ourselves is how likely it is that um, if there was a war, uh, the archives would be attacked, um, either us at the National Archives or some other archival institution. Well, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's not an unlikely scenario, at least not if we look at other countries that have suffered from wars in recent years. Um, in Ukraine, there are lots of examples. Uh, where deliberate destruction of archives have been documented. And there was a recent report called uh, Potential Damage to Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Sites. Well, it was made by um, the Smithsonian Cultural Rescue Initiative and some other um, organizations. And they uh, have, until April uh, this year, counted 143 damaged archives and libraries in Ukraine. And, well, why would someone attack archives? That, um, uh, that uh, you have cultural heritage in them is one reason, but all, there is so much more. And another very important reason to attack an archive would be that they can contain records from services that are critical to the functioning of society, records that are critical to national security. Um, this could be records of uh, critical infrastructure, communications, public safety, pub law enforcement and things like that. Records that are essential to vital functions of society. And actually, um, we at the National Archives in Sweden have made a report about uh, the problem with preserving records of this kind. Um, the challenge of uh, preserving and protecting records that are from services that are critical to the functioning of society. Samhälls viktig information. If anyone is interested in this report, it's on our website. Unfortunately, only in Swedish. But Still, uh, one thing that we write in this report is the problem that critical information for the information that's critical for the functioning of society can be found not only in archives from government agencies, but also from a lot of private businesses all around society. And uh, their uh, archives are not covered by the Swedish archive law. This means that there are no legal requirements for records to be preserved. And if they're not preserved, then if they are needed, perhaps in time of crisis or war, um, then maybe we don't have that information. Um, and this is uh, um, uh, important when it comes to contingency planning for archives, that they contain a lot of different kinds of information here. Um, the cultural heritage aspect is important, but also we have uh, all those records from services that are critical to the functioning of society and records that are critical to national security. They're not um, sort of um, exclusive categories. One document can be uh, part of um, 
can be both cultural heritage and critical to natural security, for instance. Uh, but how do we manage this contingency planning? Well, it has to be done in three time perspectives. One is planning ahead before the war. The second is, of course, during a war or big crisis. And the third is the aftermath. Before the war means planning and preparing for situations that will hopefully never come. Um, disaster management has to be planned in advance. Uh, evacuation, everything like that will be so much easier if you have uh, thought the situations through in advance. Uh, so if this kind of crisis comes, we will be as ready as possible. And in this, there are two very important things. Uh, the first is making sure that archive buildings are safe and secure as much as possible. And this includes, of course, uh, storage for digital records that should be safe, um, sec cyber security and everything like that. Uh, uh, cyber attacks is, of course, something that could happen um, any day. So uh, cyber security is not something that should be taken lightly. And the other thing that you can do to prepare is making digital copies of records this is a very important safeguard to preserve information. So if the original documents are damaged or destroyed, then you have the copy. And this is uh, not something new for us at the National Archives. We began microfilming documents already in the 1940s and have since then moved over to the digitization of documents. And of course, a digital copy is not the same thing as the original record, but it is better than nothing, and it can preserve this uh, information that could be vital to the function of society. If we move along on the timeline, you have uh, planning for times of war. So contingency planning is of the utmost importance for this situation. Um, Security for archive premises, cybersecurity is of course top priorities. And especially important is that sensitive and secret information can be protected from unauthorized access. So if you have information in the archive that could be useful for an enemy in their war efforts, then it can not be allowed to fall into their hands and must be kept safe. Another aspect of keeping archives safe is that um, in case of war, uh, some records could actually be vital to keep society going. So uh, this uh, protecting the archive um, operations is actually also important during time of war. And then the third time perspective is after the war. So um, this is to make the transition into well, normal times easier and preparing for the time that comes after a war uh, gives us hope, but it's also necessary to make the transition to peace as easy as possible. And uh, it also to prevent new conflicts from arising. For instance, if refugees return home, they need archives to prove that their homes are theirs or many other things that keep uh, society uh, working uh, as it should. And well, what I have said here today is that contingency planning and preparedness is of great importance for archives for several reasons. And one reason is, of course, that uh, cultural her heritage uh, is uh, in our archives. And another important thing is that the functioning of society is dependent on the information in the archives. So contingency planning for archives is keeping both our history and our society safe. Thank you.
Thank you, Ruth. Please come up to the uh, stage. To the stage. Uh, I would like to ask you: uh, Do you see any similar challenges between uh, Sweden and Estonia in regard to archives, and also regarding uh, preparedness and uh, threats and security questions? And is there an opening also for? eventually collaboration between Sweden and Estonia in these questions? Um, I think uh, archives everywhere have a lot of similar challenges and also cooperation can be vital. I know that we have cooperated with Estonia. Um, we have kept records from the time when you were not um, uh, independent as a country. So. Uh, I think, yeah, shows. <laughs> yeah, I do agree. And um, uh, as we weren't aware um, what uh, each of us will talk about, so actually we were asked um, just before the session began today in the afternoon who should be first. But we just decided that uh, let it be like it was announced, me first and Maria next. Actually, Maria's presentation was talking about the same was what I was talking, only I was uh, not presenting classified information which was uh, given from me to you about the doings of National Archives was uh, just overview um, and practical approach, how we have dissolved actually the same questions which were arised and, uh, and, and uh, stressed on by Maria. So, of course, archives, uh, we have... Uh, our history is, of course, uh, shorter, and your collections are much bigger, for sure. But uh, in general, archives still are the archives, luckily. Luckily. Thank you very much, both of you. And applause. <clears throat>